argumentative introductions. The whole point of your argumentative introduction is to bring up your topic. Just like in conversation, if you were to say an opinion entirely out of the blue, you would lose most people. So if I were to tell you with no context whatsoever that LeBron James is the greatest basketball player of all time, you'd probably give me a moment where you'd maybe shake your head and look at me and you're like, wait, where did that come from? Instead, if I were to start with a conversation with something like, hey, did you catch the game last night? And start talking about the basketball game and then give you my opinion, it would make a lot more sense. This is the same thing, but in an essay. So you might be thinking, what should an introduction to an argumentative essay include? There are three main things that you should include in your essay. First, you're going to hook the reader's attention. There are three different ways we're going to look at uh, in this short video, and you'll choose which one makes most sense to you and for your essay. Those three different ways are going to be a question, a startling fact, or an anecdote. Second, you need to provide any background information on the topic, especially if there's like a definition. This is a great place for it. Third, your last sentence of your introduction is going to be your bold opinion otherwise known as your thesis. Let's take a look at a few examples. Here's our first one. This is an example using an anecdote. And this anecdote actually came from Jalil's On Demand. As I read, I want you to see if you can decide for yourself where's the hook, where's the background information, and where's the bold opinion. And then I'll show you uh, where we see them on the next slide. When I go home, I go straight to get my game to connect with friends from school or friends from across the country. I feel as though we should be able to play any game we want with no problem. Some people in the government have talked about limiting video games with violence like shooting or weapons in order to try to stop violence. The government should not stop people from making or playing these games because these games don't make people violent and they help people relax. If you want, take a moment now and pause the video and decide to yourself, where is the hook, where is the background information, and where is the bold opinion? Let's take a look now. Here we see these three different parts. We've got the hook with his short story about his own life, a little bit of background about some of the argument that's happening, and then his opinion. Let's take a look at, this is example one, this is an anecdote. If you want to start your argument best day with a short story, it can be your own, or it might be a mini story of someone else in a way that, let's say if you're writing about gun violence, the gun violence has affected them. Or if you're writing about gentrification, maybe one person who's been impacted by gentrification. Let's take a look at the next example. The second way you might start is with a startling fact. You need to make sure it's really startling and it's going to grab people's attention. We see here, by age 18, American children will have seen 16,000 murders, 200,000 acts of violence depicted in violent video games, movies, and television. At the same time, murder and gun violence in the real world has been on the rise. These two facts are clearly connected. The government should not do more to limit who has access to violent video games in order to reduce violence in the real world. Same as last time. See if you can decide for yourself where are these three different parts. Did you get it right? I hope so. We're seeing a pattern here, how it follows exactly the same order. When you write your essay, you might want to start with a startling fact, but make sure that it's truly startling. And I'm realizing here this one probably should have been an exact quote because this was a quotation by someone else. So if I were to edit this, if I were to go back and go back and make sure I add quotation marks, because this is not the author's own words. Let's take one more. This last one is a question. Now the question might seem like it's an easy thing, but I want to push you to think of something more, more unique or more interesting than something like, have you played a violent video game? Because that's a really boring way to start. When you ask, if you're going to start with a question, your goal should really get to ask this sort of question that's going to make people think. So here, here's an example. Which is more important, 
someone's life, or people playing any video game they want. Every year, millions of Americans play video games, and while this doesn't make every person violent, it increases overall violence. Even one person's life is worth taking action for. The government should do more to limit who has access to violent video games in order to reduce violence in the real world. Take a moment, see if you can identify the three sections. I'm hoping by now you got it right. I want to point out with this question, what makes this a good hook is that it really makes people wonder. There may, there's not a clear, obvious answer, and it's not something like, have you ever done blank? Because that might have been a really good introduction for fourth grade, but as we move on, we want to ask good questions that really get people thinking. These are three different ways. You notice each of these are a little different. But all of them are going to end with your thesis. That will be the last sentence you write. You should include a little bit of background. If you're writing about gentrification, assume that, you're off, that your reader doesn't know what gentrification is. You should probably define it here. And then you've got those three different options for your hook. Feel free to replay any of these that you need to. I look forward to seeing what you guys write.